Hello there, Auric Expressions of Humanity. Trace here, and I've been thinking about the golden ratio. I mean, how can I not? It's supposedly everywhere and in everything, and somehow this mathematical concept has been the bedrock of all nature and human architecture since ancient times, right? Not so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's talk about the golden ratio. This video might get ratioed, but I've never actually been super into the golden ratio, also known as the golden section, golden mean, golden number divine, proportion, divine section, and golden proportion. I know it has like amazing branding, but like, eh. The golden ratio is 1.618033988875 and so on and so forth. It's an irrational number, so it can't be represented by a fraction, but it can be represented by the symbol phi or phi, depending on if you're more into the modern or ancient Greek. It was created or discovered, depending on how metaphysical you want to be, by numerous ancient societies. Famously, the ancient Greeks and Egyptians both allegedly used this ratio in their architecting of the Parthenon and the Great Pyramids at Giza, respectively. It's got some really big names under its brand, from Da Vinci to Euclid to quantum physics physics, but it's more than just a meme or a button in my camera app that I almost never use. The ratio of 1.618 yada yada comes from the mathematical proportion of certain rectangles. Written out and simplified, it's A over B equals A plus B over A. When that is equal to both of those divided by the long side, then you get the golden ratio. And illustrated, it's this really easy to understand rectangle. Goldie is famous because it's easy to illustrate in ancient construction, and it was thought by some to be the most pleasing rectangle you can see. But on top of that, the rectangle is the limit for a Fibonacci sequence, a simple set of numbers where each number is the sum of the two preceding it. So 1 plus 2 equals 3, 2 plus 3 equals 5, 3 plus 5 equals 8, 5 plus 8 equals 13, and so on and so forth forever. Together, the golden spiral within the Fibonacci sequence is almost everywhere online, and it's taken on this like religious-esque love and deference, but outside of ancient construction and the occasional polymathic master painting of a lady, the golden ratio is really an interesting ratio of two things. But nature doesn't have like some underlying rule or principle that makes it follow this sequence, or the GR. Yes, yeah, sure, absolutely. When you look at this Romanesco broccoli and you line it up just right, wow, golden ratio. But that's just the digital equivalent of squint and looks like, oh, it fits. The Nautilus shell is the same squint and wow. In reality, neither are actually fitting the ratio perfectly. The picture is either stretched or squeezed to make sure it matches, or there are three dimensional objects in it. And we're looking at these from one perspective that shows what we want to see. Kind of like astrology, which is based on constellations that only exist from our perspective. And that perspective is crafted to make a relationship. If you change that perspective, neither the broccoli nor Mercury's motion relative to our planet in any direction really matter. The GR got famous because mathematically it's really cool, but again, it's not a rule that nature follows. It's a correlation. The Goldie Ray is firmly planted in Euclidean math, which describes things like circles, rhombuses, spheres, and parallelograms. Also, it's just fun to say, Euclidean. <laughs> it's just fun. This math describes simple shapes, like trying to find the area of the floor plan of your house, which Euclidean math makes easy. However, if you really try to describe all the nooks and crannies of a cauliflower, or a mountain, or the little dips and divots on the beach, Euclidean math ain't gonna cut it. Instead, you have to use fractal math. Fractal math is great for calculating things like geography, the stock market, weather patterns, physical chemistry, galaxy distributions, and fluid mechanics. Stuff that's complex and sometimes appears chaotic. It's a way to try and simplify seemingly random stuff. Fractals are self-symmetrical calculations with fractional parts. They're not whole numbers, but they're symmetrical. This meme is a fractal. This one, obviously also a fractal. A great example is snowflakes. They can be modeled using fractal math. Sidebar real quick, hi. I'm not saying fractals describe all snowflakes. I'm saying that if you use fractal math and you plug in, say, 1.26, you'll get a snowflake-like shape. That's it. Describing every snowflake with a fractal would be very tough because of complex asymmetrical influences like, you know, wind temperatures, altitudes, humidities, particulates, all sorts of other things, regular temperatures, a million things. Fractals are a tool. They're not an answer and sidebar. I know you probably knew that. I had the sidebar though because outside of strict statistical scientific application, the word fractal Golden ratio, Fibonacci sequence are often used by a sci-fi fantasy metaphysical crowd as some kind of natural code, a secret. While I was researching this video, it only took me minutes to be confronted with like my first over-promising pseudo-intellectual nonsense. But yeah, fractals are cool. I'm here to tell you, they're not magic. 
They're just math or science or both. The golden ratio, though it does describe a very pleasing rectangle, does not cause things. It describes them. It describes a ratio, a proportion, and it doesn't even do so that often, to be honest. Y Sorry, what? Yeah, it's just not that common. You can find the Fibonacci sequence in the golden ratio if you go looking, but nature is biology and biology is messy. So Fibby G, that's the golden ratio plus Fibonacci. Fibby G, uh-uh. Pine cones, pineapples, and sunflowers are famously Fibonacci golden ratio plants. Personally, I think this is icky to look at, but you know, everyone has their own preferences. Counting clockwise and counterclockwise spirals on the faces of some sunflowers will result in 34, 55, 55, 89, or 89, 144 spirals. Though this matches Fibby G, it doesn't have a known biological mechanism as to why it should. In a crowdsourced open science study, researchers found 20% of sunflowers don't even fit into this pattern though. So while most sunflowers do follow this Fibby G, not all of them do. And in fact, a 2018 study looking at the Fibby G and self-replicating systems argues that the golden ratio should not be considered a special universal constant at all, but that constants such as phi appear only in a very limited range of situations. To study it, they assumed a self-replicating molecular system and then did the math. Turns out Goldie and Fibby both appeared, but so did a bunch of other constants. In reality, they deemed no reason to think that phi would be best or warrant being golden at all. There's no solid explanation as to why Fibby G shows up in nature. I think we can all agree it's not because there's some underarching rule that all of nature uses thanks to a benevolent and bearded creator woman. Instead, biologists think that nature, like all biology, often wants to be as efficient as possible. Growing and maintaining leaves or limbs and seeds, all that takes work. So if we can grow as many as possible in a small space, then we should do that. If we can grow lots of leaves that all have a high chance of seeing the sun, then do that. But to get to this ratio in nature, lots of flowers and trees died, and the ones that randomly hit on this ratio over millions of years tended to not die. There's no reason that math should work for nature. Nature has no responsibility to make mathematical sense, but because of the rules of the universe, it just does sometimes. Really, the main question I have is, why do so many people want to believe the golden ratio is everywhere in nature? even though that's a myth. Well, in November of 2015, one of my favorite studies ever came out on the reception and detection of pseudo-profound uh, bull poopy, let's call it. We the people love to believe things, especially when those things make the complex simple, Occam's razor style, but sometimes we razor a little much. In the absence of understanding of the reality or the grasping of the complexity of something, people will focus on the bull poopy as if it's real. As the paper's authors write, quote, using vagueness or ambiguity to mask a lack of meaningfulness is surely common in political rhetoric, marketing, and even academia. We see this all over the world all the time. We humans want to believe in stuff. We want Occam's razor to be real. So when people hear about the golden ratio's perfection in the eyes of some mathematicians, painters, or architects, we grab it and run. I found meaning, right? And while the Fibby G is a nice fit for the descriptions of how some natural organisms do tend to organize themselves, it's not a cause, it's not universal, and it's not really perfect. It's just really nice when things work out. I love learning new things and challenging my assumptions about stuff, like the golden ratio, especially when that assumption is thanks to a good story, like the documentaries on Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream has over 2,400 documentaries, short and long. They are my favorite place to look for interesting, thoughtful documentaries about science and history, the environment and technology, society and data, and a bunch of other stuff. It was started by the founder of Discovery Channel, so he knows what he's doing. If you loved that when you were a kid, you're gonna like this. There's a really cool series called The Joy Of, and one episode is all about the data that we're creating in the world, and there is a lot of it. I thought this episode was really good, you should check it out. All you gotta do to get unlimited access to CuriosityStream is go to curiositystream.com slash trace. Use the promo code trace, it's easy, and it only costs $2.99 a month. Plus, it directly supports the making of this show, so let me know when you do it so I can thank you. The golden ratio is sort of like exact change when the Netflix show ends and the credits are rolling just as the door opens and your partner gets home from work or the food is ready, just as you realize how hungry you are. It's super satisfying not causal. I'll leave you with this quote about bull poopy direct from the amazing paper that I mentioned earlier. Quote, hidden meaning transforms unparalleled abstract beauty. It doesn't mean anything, but you really want it to, don't you? That's exactly the point. Thanks again for watching Una Dose of Trace this week. I really hope you learned something. Let me know if you have any ideas or thoughts for future videos in the comments. Make sure you subscribe, and I will see you in the future.